Hi, welcome. I'm going to do another little mini sermon. And before I start, I wanted to let you know that I'm putting all of these on YouTube so that if you miss them, you don't have to scroll through all my posts on Facebook to try to find it. So go to YouTube, sign in, and then search Janan and Bob Terpstra. Both our names and in that order, Janan and Bob, and they should all come up. So today's topic is immediately or suddenly or quickly. You know, in these hard, hard times that we're in right now as a nation, things don't seem to be happening in our favor. But it's really encouraging to me, and I hope to you as you listen, that God can change things instantly, suddenly. So let's start with um, how your circumstances might change. I bet you all have a testimony of how things change for the better or the worse very quickly. We're going to start with David who was pretty sure that King Saul was out to get him, wanted to kill him. But his best friend, Jonathan, Saul's son, wasn't so sure. So he said, I'm going to figure this out, and I will let you know kind of secretly by this um, sending the arrows. So this is what happens. Then Jonathan's talking. Then I will send a boy to bring the arrows back. If you hear me tell him they're on this side, then you'll know as surely as the Lord lives that all is well and there is no trouble. But if I tell him, go farther, the arrows are still ahead of you, then it will mean that you must leave immediately, for the Lord is sending you away. And that's what happened. He sent the arrows farther, and David had to leave, and leave his whole life behind, and he was hiding many, many years. And I can relate to that, not the scary part, but the having to leave home quickly. You know, I moved when I was a child eight times, and it was hard each time leave all your friends and your bedroom you got all set up and you know for my mom having to find new doctors and new grocery stores and new schools and all that but you know we learned a lot through it too and I think David learned a lot God used that time of being away from home and family to strengthen him to give him a good um, band of warriors to support him and to develop his leadership skills so that suddenly was hard but it worked in this favor now, Joseph, in Genesis 4, uh, 41, was in prison. You'll remember that story. Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once, and he was quickly brought from the prison. After 10 years in jail, he was quickly brought from the prison. He changed and shaved, his, sh- shaved and changed his clothes, and Pharaoh said, you know, I hear you interpret dreams. I'm paraphrasing now. So I'm sure those 10 years in jail, Joseph had a lot of doubts and was wondering if God was listening at all. That's a long time to spend in prison. And yet his life changed quickly, immediately for the better. I mean, very soon he was made second in command of all of Egypt. So I have, My story is a lot less dramatic than that, but the example I thought of was when I was trying to be a film actress. Didn't know if I would ever break in and um, I got agents and got my resume together, et cetera, et cetera. But one day I got a phone call that suddenly, and it was NBC. And I'll, I'll never forget. It was like, Bob, it's NBC on the phone, trying to get his attention without you know, letting them know how thrilled I was. And I, I got a part in a crime reenactment thing, you know, those true crime things, and probably because I looked like the person. But it gave me the courage to keep going, you know, to not give up. And um, I bet you felt like that before, like giving up, like you're just plodding along, like your life is the same day after day after day. And, you know, I've told you before that I didn't get married till I was 46. And I felt like that was never going to change. And yet I met Bob. Well, the Israelites felt like that. They were told to march around a city and they marched and marched and marched. And I'm sure their feet were sore and they were thirsty. And day after day, they were just marching. And I, I wonder if their faith was kind of weak and thinking, what is the point, you know, when you just feel like you're, nothing's happening. But Joshua 6.20 says, when the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly, the walls of Jericho collapsed and the Israelites charged straight into the city and captured it. So God came through suddenly. And my prayer for you is that the walls that you might have in your life, that they would collapse suddenly. Maybe it's a wall of resentment that you built yourself or 
maybe it's a wall of poverty or persecution that you can't get out of. Well, don't despair because our God is powerful enough to suddenly bring down a wall. You know, sometimes when our circumstances change, we're not all that excited about it. Sometimes it isn't a wall coming down that was in our way. It's just an annoying interruption. You know, one of the most amazing things about God becoming Jesus and, or not becoming Jesus, but becoming a baby and living on earth is that he experienced life just like we do. He had to live day to day in a human body. And one of those things was being interrupted. And this is from Mark 1. Then they entered Capernaum. When the Sabbath arrived, Jesus lost no time in getting to the meeting place. He spent the day there teaching. They were surprised at his teaching, so forthright, so confident, not quibbling and quoting like the religious scholars. Suddenly, while he was in the meeting place, he was interrupted by a man who was deeply disturbed and yelling out, What business do you have here with us, Jesus? Nazarene, I know what you're up to. You're the Holy One of God, and you've come to destroy us. Well, Jesus shut him up. Quiet! Get out of him. The afflicting spirit threw the man to the ground, protesting loudly, and got out. I know I'm not the first person to point this out, but, and I'm still working and learning it myself, but maybe if we can think of interruptions in our schedule as clues from God instead of just an annoyance. Jesus' plan was to spend the day teaching, but kicking a demon out of a man and ending his suffering was a much better idea. I'm sure you're like me and maybe you get a phone call at the worst time or somebody drops in and, you know, you had plans, you had things to do, you had laundry or meals to prepare or kids to spend time with and here this interruption comes. Maybe if we can focus on God's schedule and just know that he wants to use us then, it will seem more like a blessing instead of an annoying interruption. Probably the most enjoyable scriptures about suddenly, quickly, immediately are the miracles. And I could speak for hours on all the times that Jesus acted suddenly, but I just picked a few as a sample. The first one is on when Elijah was on top of Mount Carmel, and he and the prophets of Baal were having this contest about who was the most powerful God. And uh, they were asking their God to come down and fill their trenches with offering with um, fire. And to just make things a little more interesting, Elijah poured his trenches full of water. And this is what happens, 1 Kings 18. When it's time for the sacrifice to be offered, Elijah the prophet came up and prayed, O God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make it known right now, you are God in Israel. I am your servant, and I'm doing what I'm doing under your orders. Answer me, God. Answer me and reveal to this people that you are God, the true God, and that you are giving these people another chance at repentance. Immediately, the fire of God fell and burned up the offering, the wood, the stones, the dirt, and even the water in the trench. All the people saw it happen, and they fell on their face in awed worship, exclaiming, God is the true God, God is the true God. (laughs) I love that story. I got to go to Israel when I was 30 and spend a few weeks there. And my favorite part of the whole trip was Mount Carmel. I think maybe because the scenery doesn't change that much. You know, it wasn't modern or commercialized or signs up saying, you know, Jesus slept here. It was just mountains. And I could just imagine Elijah up there calling on his true God. The next miracle story is from Luke 13. He was teaching in one of the meeting places on the Sabbath. There was a woman present, so twisted and bent over with arthritis that she couldn't even look up. She had been afflicted like this for 18 years. When Jesus saw her, he called her over. Woman, you're free. He laid hands on her, and suddenly she was standing straight and tall, giving glory to God. Bob and I both have arthritis, as I'm sure many of you do. Anybody over 50, I think, struggles with it. So I can just imagine her joy at standing straight and tall. The next verse is from Mark 5. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped, 
and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. God is obviously powerful enough to heal instantly, but he may choose to do things differently. My husband Bob is in a wheelchair and he hasn't been released from that yet. We're still praying. But he was also born colorblind and it really bothered him that he was uh, missing all the beauty. Uh, he asked a pastor at our Texas church to pray for him and a week later nothing changed and talked to his pastor and a little discouraged and the pastor said, where's your faith? And Bob really took that to heart, didn't tell me any of this was going on and kept praying and kept just trusting God. And it wasn't immediate, it was gradual, but he started saying, is that orange or pink? And he never even knew it wasn't, you know, brown. So um, now he's asking me all the time, is that turquoise or a periwinkle? You know, he sees everything and the autumn colors, the sunsets, the varieties of roses, he cries. He literally just weeps with joy. It's an amazing, amazing miracle. And it didn't happen quickly. I just thought I'd throw that in because sometimes, you know, these kind of talks can make you think, well, God didn't do that for me, but don't give up. God has different um, agendas for everybody. The next thing that I want to talk about being immediate is our call to obedience. God really likes it when we obey instantly. In Matthew 4 it says, A little farther up the shore he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee. And he called to them too, and immediately they followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. I love that. Just that get up and go. Jesus is calling. Great way to live life. I'm going to pass on a testimony that I just heard secondhand, but I hope I get the details right. This is a friend from our uh, Wisconsin church, and he drives a van um, to the park and ride at the airport. And he tries to share his faith with the passengers when there's an opportunity. And he overheard one couple talking about their child who was, um, had a lot of health challenges. So he asked them, could I pray for this person? So they got out at the airport and um, stood in the parking lot and, and he started praying and the Holy Spirit allowed him to just break into tongues into his prayer language. And this couple were not Christians, didn't really know anything as far as he could tell about the Bible or, or Jesus, but the Holy Spirit just hit them. And the man started praying in tongues, didn't know what he was doing, but was praying in tongues. And then his wife, started also and it was just phenomenal and I, I'm just so happy that my friend could be instantly obedient you know if he's been shy or thought oh maybe this isn't the right time or I, I shouldn't intrude you know he probably would never have seen that couple again and who knows the impact that that prayer had I don't know what happened to their child but I'm sure they were changed forever by having that encounter with the Holy Spirit because this man responded in obedience instantly. Matthew 19 says that Jesus said to him, if you really want to be perfect, this is a rich young ruler, go immediately and sell everything you own. Give all your money to the poor, etc. And I don't believe this verse is universal in the sense that every Christian has to sell all they have. I think God knows your heart and he knows what's holding you back from obedience, from following him wholeheartedly. For me, it's probably too much TV or reading uh, mystery novels. You know, maybe I need more time in the word, more time in prayer. Um, whatever it is for you, I, I pray that um, whether it's a hobby or a negative attitude or too much ambition or too focused on your job or whatever, that we could respond immediately to God's call. Wouldn't that be amazing to live that way where we hear Jesus calling and we say, yes, Lord. Romans 12 says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Ouch! Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. 
readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. So I love that. Quickly respond to it. The next one is about Nehemiah. And you might remember he was um, leading a group of Jews out of uh, exile in Babylon back to Jerusalem to rebuild uh, the walls of the city. Nehemiah is talking. This is Nehemiah 13. I also discovered that the Levites had not been given their prescribed portions of food. So they and the singers who were to conduct the worship services had all returned to work their fields. Immediately, I confronted the leaders and demanded, why has the temple of God been neglected? Then I called all the Levites back again and restored them to their proper duties. Sorry, I had an interruption there. An interruption. <laughs> Wonder who's calling me. So he immediately confronted the leaders because they weren't doing what was necessary. And your confrontation is hard. And it's not something we should jump into without really realizing that that's what God wants us to do, that we got clear direction. But Nehemiah saw an injustice and he wasted no time in correcting it. And I think maybe we're too soft in this regard. I know that I always think somebody else will do it. You know, maybe we should all be writing letters to our senators or serving at a food shelf or doing something tangible to correct so many injustices in our society. Well, we know the devil can also act immediately. He'll waste no time in trying to harm you. Daniel 3 says, this is Nebuchadnezzar, the evil king talking, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I made for you when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you'll be thrown immediately into the blasting furnace. And what good will your God be able to do then? Will he be able to rescue you? For my power? Well, Daniel obeyed God despite the certainty of instant death. But God chose to deliver him. You know the rest of the story. Sharing the gospel is another way we can obey God immediately. John 1. Andrew, Simon's brother, was one of the two who heard John's witness and followed Jesus. The first thing he did after finding where Jesus lived was to find his brother Simon, telling him, We found the Messiah! He immediately led him to Jesus. Jesus took one look and said, You're John's son, Simon. From now on, your name is Rock. That's cool, huh? Immediately. I know it seems like for most of us, there's a right time and a place for that conversation. You know, the one where you're trying to explain your love for Jesus, the, not, the necessity of knowing Jesus to your uncle or your coworker, or your neighbor and it and we put it off because we think mm, I don't know if they're you know in the right frame of mind or receptive or you know if I built up enough of a rapport or whatever so this is challenging for me you know he went immediately and said I found the Messiah that should really be our goal all the time well, I'm going to stop now and pick this up in a little bit with uh, part two have a great day.